mind. And also anyone has questions on help me at nurmuhammad.com, help me at nurmuhammad.com. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh What is the reality of an out of body experience during deep meditation? The reality is uh, like what we're saying that anytime we're meditating we're breaking the form. That the form is, is merely a shell in which its passenger is much more precious to Allah the passenger inside and the soul inside is much more precious than the body. When we sit and we do our tafakkur, do our meditation, there's like a cracking that's trying to occur and that which is hidden, that's why the Surat al-Zalzala is a description of tafakkur. That which is hidden has to come out. Now in the month of 11 many hidden things will come out. Because that is the tajalli of, of everything around. But for insan and the person and the student trying to reach realities, it's a, a sign that when we read then I say, oh like the earth has earthquakes, my body is the earth. And when it quakes and shakes, God wants something of a reality to come out. And that reality is what's important, not the, the physicality. And so when the meditations and different experiences in the meditation the soul may come out and then there's vision by the soul, there's hearing from the soul, there's all sorts of things that the soul may experience and, and uh, those are all a part of the whole process. Many times through the tafakkur somebody may sit and meditate and they fall asleep, the energy is very heavy that's coming and trying to bring an opening and then they pass out and, and fall asleep again because of the energies that are very strong. And again you just discipline yourself, have strong tea and try to sort of keep your state in a wakeful state and continue the practices. But if you do things tired and try to, to do a practice of, of that nature then of course you're going to sleep because it's not for relaxation, it's to achieve an opening. If you sit down to do something of a spiritual practice when you're tired, you're sleepy, your stomach is full then there's no benefit that you're not going to experience anything other than sleep. Keep yourself hungry, keep yourself nicely awake late at night, have some tea, coffee and then you do the practices and the energy should come very strong in which after that you can't sleep because there's too much energy. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, wa Can we talk to the angels that guard our hearts or should we not? Yeah, just stick with doing the madad of the shaykhs. You don't know if that's an angel you're trying to talk to, you don't know if it's a jinn you're talking to. Anyone from the, the heavenly kingdom tries to stay out of your way when you have a shaykh. They're not here to confuse you. So the only one who's there to confuse you is something confusing. There's a discipline. So when they know that this person has a shaykh and they know they've been taught to connect with the shaykh, visualize the shaykh, communicate with the shaykh, uh, email the shaykh, they don't step in to confuse you other than something confusing is doing that. So that way you know that why would an angel be doing that? So that's the danger when why would an angel come to confuse you and go against what your shaykh is teaching. So that's just a creature that maybe is trying to come and make things confusing, distract you and before you know it says, listen to me and not him. As Salaamu Sayyidi what is the adab when asking permission from the shaykh for matters such as marriage, traveling or business and what would be some common mistakes we can avoid when asking? The ma marriage, travel, business, that's why we 
develop the help me at nurmuhammad.com that I'm intending to get married inshaAllah they make du'a for you, connect your heart. But again the no shaykh should be making choices for you. Your life is yours and the test is all yours. If a shaykh wants to make a choice for you that's not good. So that's not the… this is not the way. I know a lot of subcontinents are emailing that here's three names pick one but life is your test. So if you pick the wrong one you can have 20 years of problems. That's you know that's the test you're supposed to go through not the shaykh and then you chose the wrong school for you and then now you're upset why did you choose this school? It's not the shaykh's test. The shaykh is here as, as a mentor not the one substituting to take your life's uh, exams for you. So then that's why the foundation of this relationship is based on you email, make your, your connection, make your support so that you're, you're confirmed on the way, you're participating on this way and then you start to meditate, make your tafakkur, make your contemplation. This is the basis of, of your whole foundation in this relationship. So when you're, con when you're connecting, you're practicing, you're participating, you're involved, you're posting, you're making comments, you're doing everything, you don't think that in your heart would have an inspiration? And then at that time you say that I'm inspired that I'm uh, going to this school, I'm about to move like this, shaykh please pray for me that it be a safe move and inshaAllah the shaykh prays for you. But if there's any concern at that time the shaykh will tell you that just be careful don't go into that region. So if it is of a danger and you've built your relationship they'll give you a, a notice of no don't travel as a as a person into an area by yourself and you should be accompanied by someone. So they'll give you the information that's necessary but they're not here to take people's tests for them. And when it comes to marriages in the subcontinent those are deep family issues. So shaykhs again should not be intervening in those subjects because it's not something that the person can just say, okay I'm going to listen now to your advice and go back and fight all my family. When the families are arranging something, they're arranging something so that has to be you talking with the family of what you like and what you don't like. But to come back to your family and say, no the shaykh said this and not that and that, that's not an issue they should be getting involved in inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah uh, What can we do if someone is stopping us against our will from commenting, liking, sharing, supporting or being in contact with the shaykh? How can we strongly stay connected? They're also not allowing to email, help me. What should they do? Uh, yeah, in inshaAllah fix through your heart. <laughs> Just sit and connect your heart. I don't know how in, in this time and age unless you're very young that you don't have access to emails and, and to, to different things. So but uh, if that's the condition and, and that's the condition Allah put you in, then Allah knows the condition of His servant and you make, Ufa Abu Amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bilibad. The du'a that we're making all the time I strongly recommend for people to make, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al-Asbab that uh, for the causer of conditions, Mufati Abwaab that open a condition. So every time Allah puts a servant in a condition there's a push towards an opening that Allah is trying to get the servant to move for that opening. And then the end of the du'a, Ufawud amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ibad. That for verily Allah sees my, you see my condition Ya Rabbi. If people yelling at me you see my condition, if people bothering me you see my condition, if people tor tormenting me you see my condition. And if you are truly oppressed then know that your du'a is 100% accepted in Divinely Presence and as a matter of fact Prophet warned that be careful from the du'a of the oppressed for they go straight into the Divinely Presence. So inshaAllah you make your du'a and Allah inshaAllah to, to give you what is in, you're in need of inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, thank you for helping us understand that Taweez Adab, does it lose its secret if exposed to bad energy or water or opened? Do we keep the same one forever? 
No, if you… if the ink runs off of it and it became wet and watered you just have to get a new one, replace it and the du'a is on it, the shaykh's du'a is on it. This is from the barakah of Sultan Awliya Man Shaykh Abdul Rafaiz al Dagestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and it comes with its, its blessing. So just by having it and if it gets wet we try to put a new one so that the adab is, is nicely written on it, everything is nice and clean up on it. But the protection is always there from the spiritual beings inshaAllah that are all around our homes, our family, our children inshaAllah. It's, it's having an ihtiram and a respect is what's important for it. So the protection is always there inshaAllah with the barakah of the shaykhs and, and the, the barakah of these big awliyaullah. And then keeping the adab of it is an important respect. So the shaykh's picture may have an immense power. When you keep the adab and put it in a beautiful frame versus just tacking it up it has a different blessing in, in keeping the, the respect for it. So that, that has its own realities that open. So when we keep the respect for something Allah multiplies its Divinely grace and its blessings, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam Is it is it safe to do zikr or tahajjud at night in the backyard if we live in the woods with neighbors from other spiritual paths? <laughs> well that sounds uh, scary. <laughs> yeah I, 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 I have some, some people I know who like nature but uh, Personally our, ourselves because of being hyper alert and, and hyper sensitive there's a lot of danger in the open. So our, our blessings is in a sanctuary. So imagine you have a, this faith, our heart we just described our very precious jewels. If your heart like a shining ruby. And they tell you that if you have this big ruby on your bracelet or on your ring and go into the woods with it and just start screaming out and howling out and doing zikr, whatever you want. We'll go around with this ruby all around you know in the bushes and all in the wild. The likelihood is you would feel very uncomfortable knowing that you know I have this big jewelry and I'm just sort of you know chanting in the woods, am I going to attract something, is something going to come and steal this and, and create a problem. So there's always that danger that there, there are many nefarious energies is what we're describing. And if the heart has these precious jewels and you're not yet in a position built up with lots of spiritual protection all around you and this jewel that is out they'll wonder why are you out here. And why are you doing those things like that without your spiritual protection and you face a, a chance of you know energies attacking and, and, and sort of very difficult things coming. So in the beginning phases was always described that you know you fortify your location, your windows at Maghrib are closed, the taweezes are on the window, everything is locked off like a security room because you're going to now open the vault with all the precious jewels of the heavens which is your chest. So as soon as you're going to sit and practice you know at least the energy is not coming from outside, the things are not shooting in arrows from the windows and looking with their bad nazar. So that your energy in the room is being sanctified, is being purified and then when you do the madad the shaykh's energies are there and there should be nothing else and these are all going to be mu'min beings in that energy. You can't guarantee that when you're in the woods, just screaming out in the woods and, and, and somebody else chanting something else and, and it, it can go in all different directions. So you know you can do with a grain of salt but for the people who are watching the preferred way is in a sanctified location without creatures, animals in a purified area and to do your practices until you build yourself and attain the Divine grace and dressings and spiritual support and, and protection upon the servant, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa 
Is it safe to just listen to the zikr and salawat on the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, on other YouTube channels? Inshallah, can you please explain? Or is that not safe as we do not know the source of that person? Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. No, in any recitation of salawat and, and nasheed and du'as, alhamdulillah, they're all beautiful. So you, you, you can listen to them and should be, should be safe but if you have a preferred recitation and a preferred place then it's best not to shop around because if it's working then work it. And I know that there were association of chari charitable projects was a group that would always recite nasheeds and then attack you with their belief and weird, weird talks. And they were using the salawats and nasheeds as, as a way of sort of gathering and collecting people. So those are the, the only ones that are a little bit suspicious but if you have a, a source in which you like to listen to and it, you feel the beauty of the, the recitation and the purity of the reciter means if the reciter is from Ahlul Tariqah and their tariqah people reciting they have an immense ish and love at the same time they're continuously trying to clean and purify their hearts. So the way they recite it, it sends out a tremendous love and energy inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, During the meditation do we speak only from our heart and not speak by moving our lips even for zikr? No you can do your zikr with your lips and you can do zikr with your tasbih. Doesn't, doesn't, uh, those are different. If you're trying to just connect with your heart, asking through your heart that the shaykh to dress me with your dress, fill me with your light, then it's all through your heart. You don't have to move anything, you don't have to move your tongue, you don't have to move your hands. You can just do your breathing, zikrahu and, and visualize the shaykh is there and then asking from his heart a light to come into your heart. And then visualizing that light to come. Then you can do another meditation next time in which you just have the light of the shaykh, you did your madad and now you want to do your zikrs and with your tasbihs, Allah, 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 Allah. So they're all different, they're all different on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to do your zikr with your connection? Are you trying to do the awrad with the connection? Or are you trying to breathe and, and breathe the energy and, and open up the, the power of the breath? So the meditation has many different types that are, are trying to be done. There's the madad and the connection in which you're trying to establish the connection with the shaykh. That you make the awrad, you recite what needs to be recited, seven day istighfar, three surat al ikhlas, make sure you have wudu and asking for the madad of the shaykh, asking for the shaykh to be present and asking to connect with the shaykh. And that's silent and asking for the light to enter. And that you keep doing until you feel that presence, you feel the familiarity of the shaykh and that it's not something foreign to you and that you feel that familiarity and say, please madad say, dress my heart from your light and bring the madad of the shaykhs and, and keep me in the association of shaykhs. So that's one particular form that has to be done to make the connection, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How important is the volume of the broadcast? Can the mu'min beings hear the nasheeds if we use headphones? Can the mu'min beings hear the nasheeds on your headphones? Uh, no, it has to play for them too if you want them to hear. So I play when we're away from the center, I have it on the YouTube with the reverb and I'm playing it on a, on a broadcast. If you are in a position in which everyone's sleeping and you're listening to yourself then that one is just for you, you put your headphones and, and listen and take yourself with your meditation to be in that association. Visualize yourself there and that you close your eyes and you're in the presence of the shaykh in that association, in that zikr, in that uh, nasheed inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Why is there so much contention behind the concept of Ya Juj Majuj? If they are from Bani Adam should we not see them somewhere on earth? Hmm? The Jujuj or Majuj? 
<laughs> juja ma juja. You see them in the Chinese people, yeah, they're from the, the descendants that before the your juja ma juja is in the last days, after even Sayyidina Mati That's why it's not relevant now that one who was talking about juja ma juja and the eschatology in the last days, that's way past the time of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, past the time of Sayyidina Isa Salaam and his 40 golden years that each year like uh, how many years we don't know. After all of that Ya Juj and Maju come out and eat everybody. So <laughs> that, that's… but yeah, yeah that's… that I don't… yeah I don't think we're going to see that in our lifetime but uh, Nevertheless, the descendants of those people are the Chinese. They are the descendants of the, this lineage of the Juja Majuj. And uh, what you see now on Facebook and YouTube of how they just eat everything alive, moving, crawling, whatever it is, it's from that reality. So when people are not understanding, oh what is this Jeju Majuj? They're going to eat everything, they're going to drink everything. As a matter of fact the Chinese they fight like that. That when U.S. forces were going into battle they had entire fleets of ships coming and bringing them food, food and refreshments and entertainment because they needed so many <laughs> supplies to go somewhere to do something. These Chinese, they gave the people a fork <laughs> yeah, So they basically… and the Korean army and the Chinese army were similar. They basically literally gave them just utensils and go. And as they were marching they were eating everything. So for somebody thought that was hard to believe, now what's the most fascinating food things on Facebook? are these people who are just like eating everything and they're of a Chinese background. And the causation which they're arguing now of this pandemic that came was from them eating these animals in markets and eating things that they're not supposed to eat. They eat that bat that even looked like a human, the face of that creature looks like a human and they were just eating it with a soup. So this eating and, and not having the adab of eating. And eating whether it's alive, whether it's dead, whether it's flesh, whether it's cold, whether it's cooked. This is the juj and majuj genes and genetic system that running through them. So anyone who want to see it in action, we look to that race and their ability just to eat and drink everything. They eat the blood of animals, they eat the animal alive, they eat the animal cooked, they, they, they everything. So then that's… For entertainment understanding you look and say, oh this is like Jusha Majuj, they are the descendants of this line, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do we attract bad energy like jinn if we do zikr after bayah or is it safe to do it anytime and not being in contact with any shaykh? I didn't understand that. After you do your bayat, you can't do zikr? I guess some people think that by after doing bayat you're more… Uh, more jinns come <laughs> as opposed to doing it without a shaykh. Doing the zikr without a shaykh? Bayat. Yeah, no doing the zikr without a shaykh is the danger, that's what we described like in the forest. Is that <laughs> when you start to recite things in numbers and imagine again we give by analogy is always understanding is easier. That your heart becomes a light bulb on a dark summer night. So as soon as you illuminate yourself, what happens at night in, in summertime is all the bugs come to the light because they're not used to seeing any light. So as soon as you turn one light bulb on, I remember back home in different countries, you open the door and all the bugs come into the room where there's a light bulb. They come from outside in a second, they just fly in in a second. So because the heart will become illuminated with the zikr, all the bad energies become attracted to that heart. So don't worry about jinn, just say bad energy. So as soon as you start doing your zikrs of course energies are going to start coming because you put out a positive charge. Anytime you put a positive charge negative comes. 
So if you just pick up and say, I'm going to recite 10,000 Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and I have no shaykh, no understanding what I'm doing, then it become a little bit of difficulty, but negative energies, the person doesn't know how to process the angers and emotions, they don't know why they're feeling. They say, oh I do zikr and I get angry. It's not that you do zikr and you got angry because zikr is beautiful. It's that you did something beautiful and devils begin to throw their, their negativity onto the person. And when the abundance of negativity of course then they explode and they become angry. So they didn't do the process in the correct order. You had to have wudu, you had to have your taweez, you have to have your shaykh, you have to learn your madad and then you start doing your zikr so that that madad and the shield and everything you've been fortified with, you begin to feel the beatific energy of the zikr. Not that you got zikr and now you became angry because you became possessed. So that's, that's why they teach a system that has to be followed inshaAllah. And no offence to Chinese people who are listening, that's just the appetite, the culture of how they eat. They're Muslim Chinese then they don't do that at all. They eat and they cook and everything has to be prepared. But this culture in which it doesn't matter, its inheritance is for us a sign, everything on the earth has a sign from Allah's stories and events that are coming onto this earth. So this Asian culture just eat anything that move and drink and cats and dog and everything, that's a sign from, from that, that reality that Allah was describing. Islamic culture came and taught people they have to prepare everything, they have to cook everything, they have to have a means in which things are, are slaughtered because every, every creature has an existence and a reality and, and a love by Allah and nothing should be harmed by insan. Everything has to be done in a humane and, and a civil manner. And this is the civilness and humanity of the heavens because we don't live by laws of the jungle because we are a paradise people, not jungle people. So we come with a paradise reality onto the jungle of this earth and to remind people, hey we come from paradise, we eat differently, we look differently, we wash differently because we're not from the jungle and we're not beasts. We come from a heavenly kingdom, that kingdom come, that will be done. That's why I said when people want to know which kingdom is coming onto this earth, well it's not the jungle kingdom, it's not the dirty kingdom, it's not the drinking kingdom, it's not the fornicating kingdom, it's Allah's kingdom that they come they come very humane to creatures, they come washed and cleaned and perfumed, they come with the best of manners, they come with fasting, they come with praying, they come with everything that you expect the heavens to have. So become more and more clear in the last days, which is the kingdom of God? As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, can you please explain the importance of Nadi Ali? Oh Nadi Ali, <laughs> well, I think we have an article on that, I, that I can't do that in, in 10 minutes and I have to read about and the benefit of any time calling upon Imam Ali Salaam has its immensity. I think we have from Ahmad Rida in Pakistan, the shaykhs there that uh, we have that posted on Facebook that recited 66 times to take this away, recited 3000 times take this away. So many, many, many immense blessings of calling upon Imam Ali Salaam. More important is to understand the importance of Imam Ali Salaam especially in the last days. That he's very much among the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and I think last time we talked about the Nadi Ali in our Arabic book. What uh, page is that? 45. And when we said that the last verse of it is what? <coughs> last verse is the honorable name of Imam Ali salam is inscribed upon the heart and upon the consciousness. It is immensely deep. All, all of the Nadi Ali when you read the English is just uh, immense. Your name and grace has reached the highest ranks. Father of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain, your light has never been veiled from the world. God has given the honour to your existence. Everything else is but a dust. 
and you are as gold. Ya Imam Ali your love is an obligation and mandatory, your lofty position is above all stations and ranks of awliya. That nobody can become a wali without Imam Ali signing So that tells you about the station of wilayat. When he has to sign for sainthood uh, tells you that he must be <laughs> a very high station. So whatever we think of, of anyone being a saint and wali and awliya that they had to have Imam Ali sign their certificate. And that you have reached a station of excellence and high achievements. Oh no, no, the other one is also that, in the name that is engraved on my heart, glory be to the Lord who gave you that name Ali, Most High. From Prophet says, oceans you are the manifestation of generosity and the treasure that Prophet is the city of all knowledge and you are its door. The holy lips of Prophet smiled with love at your birth and your arrival in the here and the hereafter. That all saints have pledged their allegiance to you and to faithfully follow the oath of this love. From the truthful heart we are, we are to hold tight to your justice and your authority. Your banner is our pride and your honour and you are the example of chivalry and moral excellence from Prophet and then flows the essence of power and strength to you. I think there was more verses of this. Oh the last one yes then, you are the guard of the universe, you are the pillar of strength and through your reality the perfect religion of Islam has continued to exist. O victorious lion and no lion resembles you for your greatness and the Creator has testified in the day of judgment that the love of Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, Sahabi and Saints is enough for me. In this day when all the good and the bad will be apparent, not wealth nor family nor relatives would have any help or benefit. Means even the guardian of the universe, then awliyaullah are now saying that that is taken place that event that was recited in nasheeds and, and all its realities that all the turuqs have given back their secrets and their trust to be held by Imam Ali Salam to safeguard them and safely convey to the presence of Imam Mahdi Salam. That's why all the big tariqahs all over the world and all in Pakistan when the shaykh died there was no new shaykh that carried the secret. The children inherited but they did not inherit that secret. Those secrets were conveyed back to Imam Ali salam. And all of Shaykh Nazim's talks that's what he was conveying for two, three years. Ya Shah Himadan, Ya Shah Himadan, every fajr Shaykh Nazim was communicating with Shah Himadan and that Naqshbandi reality was conveyed to Imam Ali Salaam to safeguard the tariqahs and safeguard his role to present that to Imam Mahdi Salaam for his khudur and for his presence inshaAllah upon this earth. Illa sharif al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa alaihi wa sahbihi kiram wa lana shaykhina fi tariqat al Nashbandiyat al Aliyah wa sayyidu wa saddatina wa siddiqina al Fatiha.